Hello, my name is Dr. Jay Kerndon. I'm a mathematician and a math tutor from Chicago. This video is an abelian groups quiz, so it's going to be a practice quiz with solutions. So let me be a little bit more clear about what this is. It's a sample abstract algebra quiz. All the quiz problems are about abelian groups. I'll read through the quiz problems first, and then I'll go through the solutions, and I'll give you time to pause the video between the problems and solutions. You can use this time to practice taking the quiz if you want, and then when you're ready for the solutions, you can unpause the video. And this is for people who are new to the subject of group theory. So there's no advanced group theory on here, uh, and it's also not for people who are brand new. So I'm not going to give the definitions. If there's some vocabulary that you don't know, I'm sure you can look it up somewhere without too much trouble. And also I tutor abstract algebra online. So if you're looking for an abstract algebra tutor, you can register through my website. It's herndonmathservices.com. And now on to the quiz. Abelian groups quiz problem one. Part A. Find all natural numbers n for which the symmetric group on n elements is abelian. Problem one, part b. Okay, do the same thing, but with a different family of groups. Find all natural numbers n for which the cyclic group of order n is abelian. And problem one, part c. Same thing with a different family of groups. Find all natural numbers n for which the group of invertible n by n matrices over r is abelian. And your answer should be different in each part. Problem two. Prove that a group G is abelian if and only if the inverse of a times b is equal to the inverse of a times the inverse of b for all a and b in the group. Problem three. True or false? Part A. If H is a subgroup of an abelian group G, then H is abelian. Part B. If H is a quotient of an abelian group G, then H is abelian. And part C. If H and K are abelian groups, then so is their direct product, H cross K. And problem four. Show that if G is a group, so that's the square of any element is the identity element, then G is abelian. Pause here if you want to attempt these problems before I give the solutions, uh, and I'll give the solutions on the next slide. So the solutions begin in three, two, okay, last chance to pause, one, here come the spoilers. All right. So problem one, part A. Find all natural numbers n for which the symmetric group on n elements is abelian. So the solution is that the symmetric group is abelian if and only if n equals one or n equals two. So I should explain. The only permutation of the one element set is the identity permutation. So the symmetry group on one element is the trivial group, and this group is abelian because the identity commutes with itself. For the symmetry group on two elements, there are only two permutations of the two element sets that contains one and two, the identity permutation and the permutation that exchanges one and two. These permutations commute, so the symmetry group on two elements is abelian. And for n greater than 2, the symmetry group contains a 2-cycle and a 3-cycle that don't commute. So you can take the 2-cycle that exchanges 1 and 2, and the 3-cycle that sends 1 to 2, 2 to 3, and 3 to 1. And the computation would look like this. Uh, this is doing the 2-cycle on the left and the 3-cycle on the right. If you do that, you exchange 2 and 3. This is doing the 2 cycle on the right and the 3 cycle on the left, and if you do that, you exchange 1 and 3. So I don't know if I should remind you how this cycle notation works, but 
if you want to figure out where does 1 go, 1 goes to 2, and then 2 goes to 1. So the net result on 1 is that 1 doesn't move. 2 goes to 3, and then 3 stays fixed. So the net result on 2 is that 2 goes to 3. And then 3 goes around to 1, and 1 goes to 2. So 3 goes to 2. You do that with the other side of this equation, you get a different permutation. So these two permutations and these two permutations don't commute. That's the point of that. All right, problem 1b. Find all natural numbers n for which the cyclic group of order n is abelian. So the solution is that the cyclic group is always abelian. So every natural number n uh, gives you an abelian cyclic group. So kind of a trick question. I hope you didn't fall for the trick. If you did, ah, gotcha. So the explanation here is a cyclic group G is a group where there is an element little g so that any other element of the group can be written as a power of little g. Little g is called a generating element. So in any group, powers of the same element commute. So if you have g to some integer power times g to some other integer power, the powers get collected in the exponent like this. There you can commute them, and then you can split it back up into multiplication in the group. So this says any power of g commutes with any other power of g. So if every element is some power of g, then everything commutes with everything else, and so the group's abelian. So that's 1b. Uh, problem 1c. Find all natural numbers n for which the group of invertible n by n matrices is abelian. This group is usually called GLNR. So this group is abelian if and only if n is equal to 1. So a 1 by 1 matrix just consists of one real number, and then the matrix multiplication looks like this. The matrix A times the matrix B is equal to the matrix A times B, you can commute a and b because those are real numbers and real multiplication is commutative. And then you can split it back up into two matrices b times a. So this says that gl1r is abelian. In gl2r, we can find two matrices that do not commute. So you can check that both of these two matrices are invertible and that when you multiply them together, a times b with a first and b second, you get this matrix, and when you multiply them b times a with b first and a second, you get this matrix, and these two matrices are not the same. In the top right entry, this one is one half, and in the top right entry, this entry is two. So that says GL2R is not a billion. And in GLNR, for n greater than 2, you can look at these block matrices. So using the 2 by 2 matrices A and B, make a bigger matrix where you fill in ones along the diagonal for everything below and to the right of the top left corner, A in this one and B in this one, and then put zeros everywhere else. So if you do that, you get two larger matrices that don't commute, uh, and they're still invertible. So this says that GLNR is not abelian for n greater than 1. All right, moving on to problem 2. Prove that a group G is abelian if and only if the inverse of A times B is equal to the inverse of A times the inverse of B for all A and B in the group. So here's one way to do that. In any group, a times b times b inverse a inverse is equal to the identity. So why is that? Well, b and b inverse are next to each other here, so those cancel. And then after canceling the b's, you've got a and a inverse next to each other. So the a's cancel. And so everything here cancels, and you just get the identity element. And this means that the inverse of a times b is equal to b inverse a inverse. 
because if you multiply a times b times b inverse a inverse, you get the identity. That's what it means to be inverses. You multiply them together, you get the identity. So now if g is abelian, b inverse of a times b is equal to b inverse a inverse. That's what I said just above here. And because g is abelian, you can commute b inverse and a inverse. So now the a inverse is on the left and the b inverse is on the right. And that's one half of the proof. If g is abelian, then this formula holds for every a and b. So on the other hand, if the formula holds for every a and b, then you can do this computation to show that a times b is equal to b times a. So let's walk through this. a times b is definitely equal to a times b times the identity. And now rewrite the identity as a inverse b inverse b a. If you look at this, you see the b's cancel, and then after canceling the b's, the a's cancel. So everything in the parentheses cancels, and so it really is the identity element. To get from this line to this line, you rearrange the parentheses. So using associativity, you can go from here to here. And now what's in parentheses here, that's also the identity because we're assuming that the inverse of a times b is equal to a inverse b inverse. That's this assumption here. So everything in these parentheses cancels to give you the identity elements. What's left over is b times a. So a times b is equal to b times a for all a and b, and that means that g is abelian. Problem three, true or false, part a. If H is a subgroup of an abelian group G, then H is abelian. Part B, if H is a quotient of an abelian group G, then H is abelian. And part C, if H and K are abelian groups, then so is their direct product H cross K. So the answer is that all of these are true, and that's pretty weird, right? So if you replace the word abelian for some other word, like cyclic, then it's no longer the case that all of these are true. If you replace the word abelian for pretty much any other word that describes groups, some of these will be true, some of these will be false, but abelian groups are very special because they're closed under taking subgroups, quotients, and products. So I'll give the proofs of these true facts here. For part A, if H is a subgroup of an abelian group G, then for all H1 and H2 in the group H, H1 times H2 equals H2 times H1, because the group operation in G is abelian. But this is the same operation in H, so H is abelian too. For part B, if H is a quotient of G, then there is a surjective group homomorphism, I'll call it Q, which goes from G onto H. Now with G abelian, for any H1 and H2 in the group H, there are G1 and G2 in the group G, so that H1 times H2 is equal to Q of G1 times Q of G2. Here I'm using the fact that Q is a surjection, so I can find these points G1 and G2. Uh, from here to here, I'm using the fact that Q is a group homomorphism. So instead of doing the multiplication outside of Q, I can do multiplication inside of Q in the group G. From here to here, I'm using the fact that G is abelian. So G1 times G2 is equal to G2 times G1. And then from here to here, I'm using the fact that Q is a homomorphism again. And then from here to here, I'm using the fact that Q of G1 is equal to H1 and Q of G2 is equal to H2. So all this says that H1 times H2 is equal to H2 times H1. So H is abelian. And now for products. If H and K are abelian groups, then for all H1 and H2 in H and K1 and K2 in K, when you multiply h1 comma k1 
times h2 comma k2 you multiply the first coordinates together and that gives you the first coordinate of the product h1 times h2 and you multiply the second coordinates together and that gives you the second coordinate of the product k1 times k2 the first entry lives in h the second entry lives in k both h and k are abelian so you can swap h1 and h2 and get h2 times h1 and the same thing with the k's you can swap them to get k2 times k1 and now factor this element in the product so then you get h2 comma k2 that's the left term and h1 comma k1 that's the right term so we managed to commute these two elements in the product h1 comma k1 and h2 comma k2 they switched places so the product h cross k is abelian And the last problem, problem four, show that if G is a group, so that for any element little g, g squared equals the identity, then G is abelian. So here is one solution to that. Suppose you have a group G with this property. The equation G squared equals one implies that every element is its own inverse, because if you multiply an element by some elements and you get the identity, then those two elements are inverses with each other. This is saying if you multiply some element by itself, you get the identity, so every element is its own inverse. And then you can do this. Take any A and B in the group, because every element is its own inverse, a times b is equal to the inverse of a times b. And now the inverse of a times b is b inverse a inverse. That's true in any group. But in this group, everything is its own inverse. So b inverse is b and a inverse is a. So if you look at what this says, it says a times b is equal to b times a. And that says that G is abelian, so that's all there is to that one. And that's the end of the quiz. So I hope you did well. If you didn't do well, then I hope you learned something. And just to remind you, I tutor online, so if you're looking for an abstract algebra tutor, you can contact me through my website, herndonmathservices.com. And that's it. Take care. Good luck. See you next time.